Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Believe in Tennessee Football. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Ferguson. Going with Reed Bacon. Ah, oh, this one's a little bit sadder than most. Uh, the Vols have lost to South Carolina. A very unexpected loss. Um, and me and Reed talk about it. Talk about the vibe that was with this team. What we saw on offense, what we saw on defense. Um how we thought everything played out. But before we get into all that, if you guys are watching and listening, please leave a comment, like, hit that notification bell, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps us so much. If you're just listening, rate and review for us. Um, leave five stars, uh, download and re-download. It helps so much. And uh, we have merch. It's live orange and white shirts of how we doing, bud? Um, so that's a fun little gift. Great Christmas gift for all those Vol fans out there. So make sure and jump on it. And if you want to follow us on social media uh, at Believe in Tennessee for our main account on Twitter at rbacon 26 re at Kyler Kerbison on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for myself, all the same. Um, so let's just get into it. <laughs> Snap. The kick is in the air, and the kick this time is no, sir, re. all right so before we jump into the podcast got a shout out our number one sponsor betonline.ag it is the place to go for betting it is your number one source for betting They have all the odds, all the team totals, all the parlays that you could ever want, and they cover every sport. You got NFL, you got NBA, you got tennis, you got golf, you got baseball, you got everything you could think of. It is the place to go if you're going to bet on anything and make anything exciting. So for first-time signups, go over to betonline.ag, and for a 50% welcome bonus, use promo code BELIEVE. B-L-E-A-V at checkout and receive that 50% welcome bonus. Bet online where the game starts. All right. Welcome in, everybody. Um, pretty demoralized right now. Not going to lie. Uh, just watch the game highlights again before we started this podcast. And I think it ruined my day again. Um, so uh, before we get into everything... Reed, how we doing, bud? <laughs> Kyler, it's okay, brother. It's okay. It's I, I listen. I was upset too, um, and I realized it's just a football game, you know. And uh, the good thing about this is, is that I still trust our, our coach, and I still trust you know the the coaching staff. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was tough, right? You know. Saturday night, I um, I'd gotten to where I, I I trust this team. There's no reason not to trust them. So I trust them going into the game. You know, I put money on them. You know, first quarter and overall again. And I don't even like laying big numbers. I'm like the king of never laying big numbers. I either tease people down or like will tease other people up. And um, I just sit there and watch the game. I even texted. I was like, everybody, just take a deep breath. You know, it's 28-24 with Missouri last week. We've been in dog fights before. Like. But then it just kept kept creeping along and kept creeping along, and the nightmare never ended. That the 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 that we didn't make the plays, things just kept getting worse. It was kind of like every time we did take two steps forward, we got hit with three or four steps back. And so I'll be honest with you, I I just I smiled about it. You know, you can either get pissed or you can just laugh or you know cry about it. And I just kind of laughed and said, you know what, it is, you know it is what it is. It really sucks. But I stopped watching with like six minutes to go because I, I can't I can't watch other teams celebrate. I can't 
watch yeah. the other fan bases go nuts or I don't want to see the coach come out there and be like, in this amazing atmosphere, like, this is great. This is why you come to South Carolina. It's like, is it do – do you want to go six and six? Like, is that why you go to South Carolina? Like, and, and I'll give credit where credit is due. We'll, we'll get there. But, yeah, I just took Annie on a walk. I, I actually – put the big coat on and walk down to the Pulse Mills tennis court, split the lights on. And I just played fetch with her and just threw the tennis ball. I was like, I didn't, I didn't want to be around it. So listen, when, when your football I, team, when your college football team loses, you really start, like you have to dig deep for perspective and be like, you know what? <laughs> like I'm still healthy, you know, like, like I, I live in a good place. You know, I got, I got a roof over my head. I got I I got animals that I love. I got I got a significant other that's great. Like you really start searching for other things in your life. Like it's okay, Kyler. Like you have a good life. <laughs> like yeah, I don't uh, be so upset. Yeah, I uh, yeah I walked up to the country club and I prayed. I was like, Lord, like you know, I just want to take this minute to like thanks for the you know like you said, put stuff in perspective. Like I was like legitimately like you know, praying for things that do really, really matter. And I, and I love the fact that sports do mean a lot to me and uh, I enjoy rooting them on or doing this podcast, talk about them. One day I'll be coaching at some point in high school, hopefully, and I'll love every minute of it. Uh, you know, and then I was like, well, the Titans won on Thursday night. And I was like, yeah, but it's not the same for my Titans this year as it was the past two years, in my opinion. Those two years, I really thought we did have a chance to win it. This year, I don't think we have a chance to win it. No. And, well, I know we don't have a chance to win it with some of the missing pieces. And the other thing is, too, I was like, it's a regular season NFL game. Like, sometimes those don't really matter. And then I was like, but, you know, like, wake up, go to church tomorrow, have a beautiful day. And then, like, you know, World Cup was today. And I was all about it. I was fired up for the World Cup. I absolutely love it. I'm not a huge soccer guy, but I love the World Cup. And then I love it even more when uh, when, when USA is involved. And so thought that that was going to end swell for not only – my bets but just for us and then brutal mistake in the box and give gareth bell a pk which i knew was going to be a goal after it happened I'm, i know you didn't get to watch any of it because you were working no. but did you even see it or keep up with it no i didn't get a chance to watch it i knew it was going on um i've got i've got your uh i got your tweets on notification for twitter so <laughs> whenever you tweet the believe account i see it so i knew i knew it was happening but uh no, nah, I didn't get to watch it. It probably would have just been even worse feeling. Uh, and I also got my ass whipped in fantasy this week, too. Um, uh, the other guy literally had, like, people get hurt and people injured, but he had Tony Pollard, the Dallas defense, and the Dallas kicker. And that got him, like, 80 points combined. And Jeez. just, like, beat me by 30. I'm like, come on, dude. Rough, man. Hold on real quick. I'm pulling this game up. Sorry for the – Turn your turn your dang volume down, Bacon. Cabela's is over here trying to get me to do – buy some. I don't want your damn Cabela's. Um, yeah, so let's – let's – let's – Let's let's talk. I, I want you to take the floor first on, on your overview. I, I know that you were really pissed, embarrassed, yeah, like I said, you're the former player, so I want to I want to hear everything you got. Um, I will say I want to say this to start out. Um, the uniforms, the orange helmets, I really liked them. I thought they looked cool. You know, I when I first saw them, I wanted us to wear orange pants with them, so it just kind of like matches. But I still think it looked great. Um, and it has nothing to do with why we lost. So we can definitely wear them again. Um, I don't want people freaking out about that. Um, this, this loss pissed me off a lot because it's not defensive guys necessarily being out of position. Um, it's not, uh, you know what they called cover two and South Carolina ran a cover two beater. That's not what it is. It was, I... listen, there might've been certain plays that set up 
perfectly against us. Yes, that might have happened. But there was laziness on the defensive side of the ball. I think Juwan Mitchell played the worst game I've ever seen um, multiple times, just like barely trying. Um, I think the corners and the DBs, I mean, they got outperformed by the South Carolina wide receivers. You know, even if you want to say, hey, they were in good position some plays or, hey, they ran with the receiver and they were there for it. Well, the receiver made the play, not them. So they got outplayed by the receivers. So who won the one-on-one matchups? They did. We didn't. Um, And I – I thought South Carolina had a good game plan. I thought them going play action a lot, getting Spencer like that. I thought them bringing in the wildcat formation, which they hadn't really shown before. And the combination of seven man protection, knowing they're going to do seven man protection with two, you know, eight man actually on some routes and two wide receivers going and they know that, Hey, we're going to just sit there in the box and not do anything and rush five versus eight man protection. And they're going to play man coverage on both of our wide receivers. Spencer, throw it up to him. And that's what he did multiple times. I just, you know, I've been in those situations as an offensive player where defense just cannot get off the field. Um, and they continually just let up points and, you know, you sit there as an offensive player, like, okay, well, I mean, I don't know what else you guys want me to do. I'm going to go out there and play as best as I can, and I'm going to do everything that I can, and I'm going to try to win this game for us. But unless you guys step up on the other side, it's not going to happen. You know, I can't control the defensive players. If I go over there and say, Hey, pick it up. Like, let's go. Like, you can do this. Da, 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 da. They're going to be like, F off. Like, I want to hear from you. Um, And then, you know, the game, the game was oh, on defense. I actually thought Jeremy Banks not being in there made a huge difference in linebacker play, just in abilities of our linebackers and also in leadership and holding guys accountable and being like, that's not good enough. Um, I thought that was lost with Jeremy Banks not playing. And then as soon as Hendon went out, the game was over. There there was not coming back. You lost your leader on defense. You lost your leader on offense. And you're down 18. Like, it's it's just not going to happen. You're done. You're cooked. Like, game is over. Um, And this, this, the worst part about this is I know that this team is better than South Carolina. Like in the past 15 to 20 years of us losing two SEC teams, it was to the point where I don't know if we were better than them. You know, we would lose to Florida and Florida would end up having four wins on the season, but I'd still be like, I don't know if we're better than them. We, you know, we would lose to South Carolina in certain years. And it's just like, yeah, I mean, that was a toss up. I had no idea if we were better than them. In 2020, when we beat South Carolina and beat Missouri and then lost all the rest of our games, I didn't know that if we were better than South Carolina, Missouri. I thought that was a toss up. This game going into it, I knew we are better than South Carolina. That is a guaranteed fact. It is still a fact right now. We played like absolute dog doo-doo, and that's why South Carolina beat us. Their coaches took advantage of whatever they could on defense. They said, you know what? Their offense is still going to score a lot of points. All we have to do is score points. That's what they did. That's what they did. Shane Bieber knew that he had this in the bag. He knew that he was going to take advantage of one-on-one matchups with his wide receivers. He knew what kind of plays he was going to run to take advantage of this defense. Because he was calling his shot all week. Said it multiple times. Yeah, why not us? Why can't we take him down? Why can't we take him down? Like, over and over and over. And golly, does it drive me up a wall. Because 
us losing to Bama, us losing to Georgia, us losing to hell LSU or Florida, it doesn't sting like us losing to a subpar team like South Carolina. They are going to lose to Clemson next week. And they're going to go seven and five and play in the damn Tax Slayer Bowl. And we're going to go 10 and two and play in the Cotton Bowl, but they still have a win over us. And that is just the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. So that's what pisses me off. And it pisses me off to watch film over and over and just see guys go like this to dudes near the sideline, not try and tackle them, just try and give them one of these and miss. I saw Jawan Mitchell do that. Literally, like he's playing two hand touch. And like I would take him by the throat if I was on that team with him and be like, what the what the hell's wrong with you? Like, if you don't want to win, if you don't want to do everything you possibly can and leave it out there as much as you possibly can, then get the hell off my field. Like, that's how I feel as a player, no matter what team I'm on. It's like I'm giving everything that I have to this team. Uh, elementary school, I'm at Boys and Girls Club. I'm giving everything I can to the team. Middle school, I'm at Robertsville Middle School. I'm giving everything I can to the team. Catholic high school, I'm literally putting forth as much possible effort as I can for the team and to win. And that's what you have to do in football. When you see someone not give full fucking effort, I, I you're not my teammate then. Like I can't, I can't have you as my teammate. If you're not doing this, if you're not giving as much as I'm giving, you're a waste of time and a waste of space to me. So that kind of stuff just really ticks me off. I'm sure coaches are gonna love looking at all the loafs that were on offense and defense. I mean, I'm not gonna say offense played their best game. They got stopped a couple times. Jalen, Jalen Hyatt just absolutely not even touching a dude on third and four at the 10 yard line. And we end up kicking a field goal. What the fuck are you doing, Jalen? You're a great wide receiver. And everyone thinks that and you're up for the bullet in the cough and you got it all these yards and touchdowns, but guess what? You just got Dylan Sampson rocked because you didn't want to do your job and block your guy. I don't know if that's you not paying attention in the film room. I don't know if that's you just being scared of the moment. I don't know if that's you having horrible understanding of what's going on but you fucked up you're the reason we kicked the field goal there let's <laughs> let's call a spade a spade i hope every single one of them goes in the damn meetings and goes hey look at this frags you see how you fucking cost us here because you had horrible technique and there's a holding call and it got called back look at this jerome look at this holding you had that they didn't call and it ended up getting a big run look how much you could have let the team down I hope every single one of them gets a nice big dose of humble pie because if not, Vanderbilt's going to beat us. If they don't check up and go, yeah, you know what? I played like shit and I'm going to play better next week. Vanderbilt will beat them. They'll do it again. Like it will be the same thing the next week. So I need somebody over there to wake up and it's not, it's not on the coaches. I'm like, As a former player, I'm telling everyone out there, it's not always on the coaches. Just because something happens in the game doesn't mean it's the coach's fault. You know how many times coaches will tell guys, use this technique? You know how many times they'll tell them, hey, this play is coming. Hey, do this on this play. Hey, get your head to this side on this block. They will pound it into their damn heads every single day in meetings, Listen, individual meeting, you'll hear it. Uh, uh, Offensive meeting, you'll hear it. Team meeting, you'll hear it. Then you'll get out in the practice field and you'll do an individual drill. You'll do it in half line. You'll do it in tie. Then you'll do it in team. And it's like at some point, it's not on the damn coaches. It's on the players. So I don't know who taught somebody to go in – to a lineman pulling across to a block and just duck your head and, and try and push your shoulder into him. I don't know who the hell taught you that. I guarantee it wasn't any of our coaches. So why the hell are you doing it? It's just like that kind of shit that I see out there. I, I know that's not taught. I know that's not what you're supposed to do. So, I mean, that's, that's what I got to say. Like, I'm just, I'm so frustrated with, how they performed and 
And I wouldn't be frustrated if this was 2020 or 2019 or 2017 when we won four games. I wouldn't be frustrated at all. Be like, yeah, it makes sense. You know, they're they're not trying. The, the coaches have it talked more about rah-rah shit than actual technique. And that they, I, I wouldn't be upset. I wouldn't be frustrated. I'm pissed off right now because I know every single player out there is better than how they performed. They just are. Oh, God. You can go now. <laughs> well, uh, you said a lot, and we're going to get into a lot of that. Um, I do – I say start the pod. Obviously, we have talked a little bit, and you've kind of given your feelings. I uh, I do want to say that how bad I feel, not only for Hendon, uh, but yeah. for Danico and Brandon Turnage. Um, the injuries are are awful. I absolutely hate that. Um, I I I do not like when I'm in the stands and you hear the other fans or even Tennessee fans are like, yeah, break his neck, break his leg. Or like, if someone goes down, they're like, stay down, I'm pussy. Or like, you know, whatever they say, like, I'm not about that. Like, no. that's just so, that's just so lame and loserish to me. Like, like get a life. Like, you know, like, so, so I, I hate that. Sorry, side tangent. Cause I just know people say that all the time and it just infuriates me, but yeah. So if it had been Spencer Rattler had gone down, like I don't like Spencer Rattler, like, but I would be like, dang, guys, like get up. Like that, that's not fun. Yeah. Um, since I said his name going into this season, if you remember, I said, I don't want to lose to Spencer Rattler or Beamer because I can't stand either of them. This was the game but, I mean, you picked us to what go nine and three. And this was the game we'd lose. Yeah. And, and, and I, I even was talking on Xbox live the, on Friday night with some, some buddies. And they were like, yeah, well, we're going to kill him or whatever. I was like, I mean, I, I you know, I, I think we're going to win. But I said, this is going to be their Super Bowl. And, like, they laughed at me. And they're like, no. Like, Clemson's our Super Bowl. I was like, no. I was like, this is their Super Bowl. Like, they will be rowdy. They will pull out all the stops. I even texted guys before it happened. I said, wait for a double pass. It's coming. I said, wait for some little trickeration. Like, it's going to come. And, like, they just beat us in every facet of the game. So, like, I'm not even mad at Spencer Rattler. Like, I would have been mad at him if we were like giving gifts up and like turning the ball over, or they had a running back that was like if if they were winning and it wasn't because of him. But dude made plays. Yeah, like as much as much as a lamo he is as as much of a lamo as he might be. Like and how like I I thought he was a lamo because he always seemed super cocky and wasn't very good. But guess what? He produced on Saturday night. So like I don't care if he's fired up and happy. Like at least he did something to deserve it. Like. He made the throws. He made the plays. Like, even some of his scrambles and, like, keeping it alive. Beamer, Beamer's a lame and Josh Heupel is a better coach, and Josh Heupel is going to have a better career just in general. But, like, I respect Beamer because you know how hard it is to go and you're not having the year that you thought. You go and get absolutely obliterated last week, and you can turn and have your team back and fight and play. Like, if I didn't see their record, I didn't know they were 6-4 and four going into this. And I just watched these two teams, the way that they executed, the how hard they played, how fired up they were for one another, the offensive court. I mean, when when Beamer said we wanted to attack, that's what they did. They attacked all night. Like, their play calls were great. Hell, yeah, there was times where, like, they did everything. I mean, I felt like I was watching the Titans at some point. They go in here with some Wildcat. Then they, then they go max protect, play action pass because they know we're in man and they just beat the man. Like yeah. they had some they had great stuff all night. We were they were dictating to us and we weren't we weren't able to dictate to them. But um I, I'll tell you what frustrates me the most about this. And like, you know what, Kyler, this team wasn't overrated. Like the UT balls, we weren't ranked going into this year. So, like, we weren't preseason darlings and had a bunch of easy cupcakes like a like a Clemson or like a Notre Dame or like even a Michigan or Ohio State. We earned this right. Exactly. We earned the right to be, number, to be number five. So, you know what? I, You know, for me, like, it's all these players. You guys earned the right to be here, and you shit the bed just as quickly. So, like, it's on y'all. Like, it doesn't, like, I'm not on the team. I'm a fan, and I'm bummed about it. But like, if I'm a player on this team, like like you were saying, like I'm I'm furious because we yes. did all the hard work. We did all the hard work of putting ourselves in the position. We were not given an AP ranked 
11th and won the games and then lost one, but then won some more and then kind of crept back in. Like, no, like we earned this. And you guys all threw it away for, for what? Like, I know there's a bunch of rumors going around and I know people are all on message boards and all, like I was in a group check. I'm in my group chat and all night they were just going back and forth about all the crap that they heard. And there's rumors of, you know, you know, banks getting into it with people and then like offense and defense getting into it. And then there's stuff on Twitter that they think the defense gave up. Like it didn't just didn't give up. Let me tell you this. If this defense is soft enough to give up or if this team is soft enough to give up on each other because they got in a little, a little fight, then this is one of my least favorite ball teams ever. And I, I could care less if they win another game because there's, and, and people don't understand, like when you're in a locker room, yeah. In the middle of games, there are dog out, just absolute fights, cussing at one another, holding people accountable. You see it all the time. So you can't tell me that a little um, weekly drama or a weekly or pregame whatever, if, if that's how weak you are, you don't, you're don't. you not the fifth team. You suck, and you don't deserve anything. And it's because, also like pride in yourself. Like Right. Every other defensive player that's out there, you know, okay, say Banks and Hendon got in a damn fight and they don't like the offense or Hendon and how he approached the situation. They don't like the fact that Banks isn't playing. Does that mean they're taking money out of their own pockets by playing like shit? You think any NFL exec, any NFL scout is looking at anybody on that defense going, you know what? They played a good game. I want to draft them. No. They look at them like dog shit. And it's just like you have pride in yourself and pride in your own play. Doesn't matter. Like, yes, there is the team and you want to take care of your teammates, but like also you want to play the best game that you can play as a competitor. If, 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 if that is the case, and and that's the, the best point you can make, because as a player, we have, you and I have been on teams that are really, really good. And we've been on teams that aren't so good. And nothing frustrated me more, but also showed true colors of when I was playing with people who I thought were a bunch of dogs and would fight till the end. And I saw them give up and were soft as baby shit. And I said, you know what, Reed, you might not be able to win this game and you might not be able uh, to get them to compete. But I can promise you, like Kyler said, I want, you know, if I'm in high school, I, I want someone to flip on a tape and be like, wow, Catholic, you know, they're not looking good. Like they're getting their ass kicked. But that number 27 is flying around, you know, like that 27 is playing his ass off. And especially for these guys who all all of them, all of them want to go to the NFL. I don't care what they tell you. Every single one of them wants to go to the NFL. And every single one of them wants NIL money. That's another thing that we've talked about is that if if there were some issues because NIL, because these people thought this person was making more and this thought was and, – and, and that's just life. I mean, if you work yeah. a job, that that's life. People are always in other people's pockets. But if you're ignorant enough to think that you are bigger than a team, then – you know, I know these are young guys, but and I know that they probably don't have good people in their ears all the time. But like, no offense, Hendon Hooker, awesome player, going to be go down as a Tennessee favorite, a great player. player. He's still not bigger than the team, but just because he was a re- just because he was around during NIL, like, bro, like you're going to be here, and, and and the next guy's coming through. People are going to like they'll be appreciate you, but someone else is coming through. Like, you think you're worth all this money? What about what Peyton Manning was worth? What about T. Martin, the guy that brought a national championship was here, was worth? Like, these kids just get it in their head that they're bigger than they are. Like, I, you know, you and I have had some information told to us about what some of these guys are making. And it's like, it's probably more, it's, you know, for some guys that really don't deserve it because they're just a starter, they're pretty average, but it's more money than they might make in their entire lifetime if they don't pull their heads out of their ass. It's like, bro, it's because you've got the power T on your helmet. It's because there's a ton of people like you and me that care about it. If you're playing it, you know, at um, if you're playing six hours de- or three hours down the road at Vandy, you're probably still the same player. You're just not producing anything because people don't give a damn about you. Go three more hours down the road to Memphis. You know, even you know what I'm saying. You can so it's literally like, still be at a big SEC school, and if you don't have good donors, you don't get nil. Like that's just how it is now. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so if, if, if it's all about NIL stuff, then like, man, these guys aren't who I thought they were. Like they, they're not a bunch of dogs that who I thought they were. And I'm not going to believe that. I'm not, I'm just going to say, listen, it was an off night for whatever reason. No one had a good night. It was an off night. I don't know if it was, you know, um, stuff that happened during the week. You know, I don't know what it was. It definitely did look like a little bit different 
when I go back and watch it, like it did not look like they had the same juice. It did not look like they say play with the same pop. And guess what, Kyler? That doesn't have to be anything off the field. There are times I've been on teams that we were a thousand percent better than the other team we were playing and we didn't bring it. Yeah. And that's the beauty of sports. That is the beauty of sports. Like you say, hey, to be on the on the losing end of it. But it's great when you're a 10 point dog at home and you come and punch Alabama right in the freaking mouth and you mm-hmm. take the fight to them or whatever the case may be. Like, that's why you got to strap up and play. And like another point that and I kind of thought this and, and I was going to look into it and another buddy brought it up to me. We're not that high. We're not that much higher above South Carolina in in program status, meaning like recruit wise. Like yeah. I still think I still think Tennessee is head over heels a better program with fan support, donor support, everything. It's it's pretty simple. Like but it the, is the, like the composite of talent is what you're talking you about. Just, right, exactly. I'm not talking about the program. I'm talking the composite of talent. So like I just went on and looked at their recruiting rankings, 2018. And I, I don't know what Tennessee was. I, I don't know what Tennessee was, so I'm not going to go back and compare compare both of them. But you got you got South Carolina in 2018. Uh, they were 18th overall. Okay, that, that's that's not bad. I mean, that's that's top 25. You know, then you go to um, in 2019, they were 22 overall uh, in in rank. Um, then you go to let's see, 2021 is I think they had a pretty rough year. I think that's when right they had here. coaching. I hope you. Uh, 2022 talent composite for team number 19, Tennessee, uh, has two five stars, 24 four stars, and 56 three stars. Number 20, South Carolina. Okay. I don't even know where you're Three found five that stars, 21 four stars, and 63 stars. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. I don't know where you found that, but thank you. It's 24 7. They they do it just based off of how many five, four, and three they have on their team. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to get you to show that because I had 24 7 pulled up, but I was just going through these years. So, yeah. So, like, technically, our program at this week, you know, week 10 of the season was head and heels above them. And we beat the dog crap out of them last year. But, like, still going into this year, I still said, hey, I'm kind of worried about that game. That was before the season started. And the only reason that made me change my mind was what I'd seen with my eyes. Yeah. But that still doesn't change the fact that, like, you have to show up. And, like I said, Spencer Rattler, as much as he was a lame and as much as I didn't like him because all the outside stuff I'd seen of him, dude showed up and balled. Like, so I can't be mad at that. Like, he has every right. Like, he made the throws. He made the plays. Beamer had his team ready to play, and it showed. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that, that's definitely true. Freaking Rattler threw as many touchdowns as he did in his last, like, seven SEC games. By the way, uh, some uh, behind-the-scenes stuff. My iPad went out again because of the storage stuff, so you'll have to use it during the rest of the time. Okay, that's fine. Which is not a big, not a big deal, but. No. Um, but. Well, well, let me ask you, let me ask you, Kyle, because I jumped in on it. So what do you, what do you think about some of these rumors and stuff? Like, I mean. I well, I don't believe anything until I hear it from a player's mouth or okay, a coach's so- mouth. That that's how I am. I, I don't care what a fucking manager says. I don't care what a uh, equipment guy says. I don't care what this person's cousin heard from this security guard. None of that shit holds any bearing on what actually happened. I want to know what happened. I want to know from a player's mouth what happened. I want to know from Jeremy Banks's mouth what happened. And I mean. He even like posted something on Instagram and I think I saved it. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. He was like, wasn't about no conflict or nothing like that. Get facts, bro. Coming back harder than ever. So he's literally saying there wasn't a conflict. The reason why he didn't play was not because of conflict. So, if Jeremy Banks is saying that and it's surrounding Jeremy Banks, then I don't believe the rumors. And then on the other side, who in their right mind would think I need to be making as much money as Hendon Hooker on that team? You're an idiot if you think I should be making as much as the starting quarterback on the number five team in the nation who is number two in Heisman chances that you should be making as much as him. 
You're a fucking idiot. You don't understand football. You don't understand who's the most important player on the you don't field. Life. You don't, you don't understand life. life. Exactly. That just, that when just I played, we didn't get money. But guess who I knew was the most popular person out there and who people cared about more and who people knew their freaking face? The quarterback. Are you kidding me? I lived just with life. Justin Worley for two years. I understood. Our lineman got on ESPN for doing a funny picture of O-line in the shadows where they took pictures of other fans walking up to Dobbs, asking for pictures, and not giving an F about anybody, any other player there. They don't even know who they are. And even those guys were starters on the offensive line. Didn't care. Had no idea who they were. We're just like, I want a picture with Dobbs. I want to, I want Dobbs to sign something. So it's like for anyone, defense, offense, anybody, coaches, anyone in that whole place to think that they are more popular than Hendon Hooker is an idiot. Yeah, it's just, I mean, that's just that's just sports. Like the quarterback gets the, you know, quarterback gets all the pub, and then they probably get too much blame sometimes during losses. Like it is what it is, but like that's just you know, and the thing is, is these these are kids. Like, they are 18, 19, 20 years old. So, like, I go back to how I thought, you know, and I probably would have thought, you know, they get recruited, they hear all this stuff, and they hear all about all the money that the school makes. And it's like, yeah, the school makes a ton of money, and I'm fine with you guys getting some of that portion. Like, but then again, like, my point that I was making earlier, like, they get it twisted that, like, they think it's them personally, like, like Kyler Kerberson's like, oh, I get deserve this because I'm Kyler Kerberson, but you're smart enough to know, like, no, it's because I'm at the University of Tennessee. It doesn't matter who comes in there. It doesn't matter the name on the back. All that matters is because the support of the university as a whole. If, if that makes sense to people, like, obviously good players make a difference, and that's what the NIL is out. Humility. What'd you say? I said humility. Yeah. Well, it's like, you could that's why I'm fine with NIL. If if Mercedes Benz, if French's uh mustard and all that, they want to sign in and hooker, that's fine by me. Good. Go go make as much money as you can. Yeah. But like, but just for example, like Jeremy Banks, if that's what was going on, if you think you deserve more, then you gotta market yourself and play good enough so other teams like you think that the, and I'm not saying that like I'm not I'm just using this example of like dude's been arrested. He got kicked out of school. How many people are going to come to him to represent them. Like maybe they want somebody else that like, you know, like every, all this stuff matters. Like your image matters, how you speak matters, how you carry yourself, what you post, what you don't post, like all that matters. So it's like either carry yourself really well. And like you said, get some humility because whoever you are, Hendon or not, you're going to be gone in a couple of years. And like somebody else is going to be making that money. Football program. Right. Exactly. 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 Like, like, Hey, guess what? Every a uh, player in the NFL who gets paid a ton of money, who gets the most, the biggest contract that they've ever seen, and da da da. da and they're like, "Dang, that's a hundred million dollar man. Dang, that's a half a billion dollar man." in, in uh, Patrick Mahomes, guess how much the Kansas City Chiefs are worth? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, billion. seven billion. So who the hell cares how much Patrick? Like, the team is worth way more than you in every aspect, in every yeah. sport. So don't yeah. think that you are better than the team. Right. No, uh, yeah, greed, facts, all the way. So, anyways, um, just some stuff about the game. Uh, like like I said, um, to kind of tie it all up before we kind of start talking about a few different plays or whatever, like they deserve to lose. South Carolina deserved to win. You know, like I want to pull for a team that's a winner, but also it's a bunch of dogs. And, like, guys like this – like that, that they didn't show up to play. Like for whatever reason, you didn't show up to play. You know, defensively, yeah. I got buddies. I got buddies that were calling for Tim Banks and Willie Martinez to be fired on the spot. Like, and I was like, "Are you guys being serious?" I even let it go till t- t- till Monday and said, "Do you guys still think they need to be fired?" And it's so funny to me. And like I always say, fans is short for fanatics. But like once again, like if you, it's so funny to me that the same players that people were. Oh, dude's a dog. Oh, dude's a baller. Oh, he's incredible. Oh, he's so this, he's so that. Well, then two weeks later, he has one bad game, and you say they all suck and fire all the coaches and all this stuff. Like, 
sometimes the other team is going to get the better of you and it's how you respond. But to, to just call for people's firing, like what Tim Banks, people were talking about Tim Banks deserved a rave three weeks ago. Yeah. He had a terrible performance. Cause I know I say he had a terrible performance because the defense is his responsibility, but like, you know how many times I watch, and I only rewatch like the first quarter and a half because I didn't want to see this garbage again. But like, you know how many times I saw where where eyes were in the wrong spot? That's what South Carolina did. I mean, their first big third down was just take these two, pull them in. Guy that was kind of an H back, we're going to pull him out. It was third and twelve, and they got it. Then they do this same type of thing again for the first touchdown. Like we didn't have our eyes in the right spot. Like Danico, when he got his eyes were in the wrong spot, and the guy did a really nice kind of. It was a streak, but he kind of brought it in, and there was too much cushion. And then Danico, if you lay out to get hit the ball, I mean, he hit it. He didn't hit it hard enough. But if you leave, you better make the play because if not, you got you should have stayed up, and made the tackle. Like those are just simple rules and, of football. And like that, like that, thir- like you were talking about with that Danico play. Like Danico was on that man. Like it's not like he was somewhere else and then had to recover and get back on this guy because someone else let him up. Like. Danico was always on him. He was his guy. He was the person he's following. And it's just Danico being like, I'm looking at the quarterback the whole time, not really paying attention to my guy running past me. Right. So it's like having an understanding of the situation. I mean, multiple times of guys just like backing up and not seeing what's in front of them and getting a letting a 12 yard hitch go in the flats when you have nothing else near you. And it's like, what like what are your eyes thinking you know like if if you want to say that you're a great corner like great corners see that and jump it and pick it off like also if you're getting your ass beat shut up dude dude shut up i i shut the hell up like if i, I was a if i was on that team i would have told uh, kamal had to shut his damn mouth oh because you're getting torched. You guys have stopped them one time the entire game, once. So I, I, you know me, like I was a big fan of Kamal Had. Like I loved the way he played. I liked, I liked that swag about him, that ferocity, or, or I don't, I like that swag. I like just his intensity. Like, and I think you need that as a corner. So like, if you do get beat, you can come back and make a play. But the, and, and I know someone might argue, well, like. You know, the same thing that makes him great is what made him look like an asshole. You know, you know, James Harden, I think James Barnes Harden's a ball hog, but other one people will say, Well, that's why he's get he's great because you know, he can, you know, he can take all these shots and be one for seven, but still take the game winning three and make it sure. That that's fine. I can understand the argument. Mm-hmm. But there is no somebody has got to be in that guy's ear and be like, You are making yourself look like an absolute jackass and the rest of us. So, you know me, like, when we were playing, I, I like to talk. Like, I, I, I like to talk and, like, give it back and, like, kind of go back and forth and, and stuff like that. But, like, I can promise you, if you're getting your ass beat like that, shut up. Because if anyone ever said anything to me when we were stomping a mud hole in them, I just point it. That's all you got to do. You just point. You just say scoreboard. And and I, I saw last – I saw before the game really got out of control where we were kind of um, – still giving it back to him a little bit and all that. I said, guys, shut up. Just come back and win the game. You're the better team. Just prove it. That's all you got to talk. And I and like I said, it's funny because I'm young enough to remember my mindset when I was their age. And now it's like you see things so much more clearly as you get older. And I'm assuming people that listen to this that are much older than us see things way more clearly. That's life. That's experience. But, like, you literally look like an absolute jackass to you and your team. It's it's an embarrassment. And, like, I went from absolutely loving him and respecting how he played to kind of just being like I, – I'm almost embarrassed that I, like, really, like, you know, kind of praised you type, type deal. Yeah. Um, you know, it was – it was and, and to talk about the, the team, too, like, like the no juice about it. Like I said, like and, – and I'm going to go back at some point. I'm going to watch the pit game. Maybe watch, uh, maybe watch the LSU. Not LSU because we jumped up on them early, but like Pitt. Maybe go back to Florida, and I don't know if it's just because in my head because some of the rumors that are going around. And I'm exactly like you. One day you and I'll find out. We'll talk to one of these players. I'm not gonna go and ask them now. I'm not gonna be that guy. Like I don't, I don't care enough 
um, and I don't want to bother them while they're still in a season. We're going to know a lot about this team, how they show up on, on Saturday. That That's that's one thing that's nice about it is, like, we're going to find out about them on Saturday. Um, but, like, the the whole just juice and, like, like I said, like, Hendon gets sacked and no one helps him up. Spragans gets whipped twice in a row, and on the second one he gets whipped, Princeton Fant, supposed to be a badass, supposed to be this, throws his head in there and gets beat too. So we had a, it was a double team, and they both get beat, and then none, none of them help their quarterback up. I don't care that he's the quarterback. You don't help your teammate up. If a running back goes down, you don't run. Like, Jabari Small had his first touchdown, and the first person that greeted him was that Parker Ball kid who's running onto the field for PAT. All year I've told you I love how this team fights and plays for each other, and, like, you would see other DBs congratulating other DBs. You know, like you would see other receivers congratulating other receivers. Shit was just off. And like I said, if that's yeah. the case, because it was other off the field stuff, and maybe, and like I said, I will check this. I will go back and watch Pitt. I will go back and watch Florida when the games were kind of back and forth. And yeah, hell, you can watch Alabama, but. Well, well, yeah, but Alabama, yeah, well, Alabama to start the game, we absolutely brought it to them. We were hitting them in the mouth and brought the fight to them. But I'm talking about as the game got going. Like, were they still like it? Just the whole the whole vibe when I went back and watched it just looked totally off. That like nobody was like juiced, fired up. You know, even if even if they made a play themselves, they weren't getting up, showing a little emotion. Let alone going and celebrate for their other teammates. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's 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 not the way you want to play. And you know, people might hate on Butch and you know everything that he did, but like some of that stuff was like one of his biggest things. It was you're the first up off the ground. If you fall down, you're the first up because it's demoralizing to the team. Even if you get popped, if even if the defender pops you, if the offensive guy runs you over, if you get off the ground first, it looks like you won. Run into the ball. No matter if you have the ball or not, no, run into the ball, no matter what. Because guess what? If you're running to the ball, you can affect the play in a positive way or you can celebrate with your teammate. So it was always running to the ball. I was in an attempt to be the first person to celebrate with every single person who scored a touchdown. I was sprinting down, knowing that I'm done with this drive. I'm not on field goal. I'm out. I'll take this 50-yard sprint. I don't care. We just scored a damn touchdown. I'm excited. And I'm going to be the first one down there to congratulate the wide receiver because he made a hell of a play and got a touchdown. Or the running back because he made a hell of a play and got a touchdown for us. And I want to make him feel great about doing that and want to do it again. That's my job as an offensive yeah. lineman. Yeah, and I know that people watching this, you're you're not saying Butch was great. Like you and I both call him a used car smells him and a clown. No, but but like work- that shit wasn't talked about with Dooley, but it was with Butch and it became important. Right. And it did change some of the things. Now, like like we always said, Butch just had it and then it fell off the cliff. Like, I mean, he literally it was a nosedive. Like yeah. I mean, he just struck off. There wasn't a little bit of a slide. I mean, he was top but- ten. But, like, still, like, in those moments, in a the football is an emotional game, and it's that fine line of playing with emotion while keeping your emotions in check. And I go back and watch this, and it just looked like, how can you be the number 15 in the nation? You're 21 or 23-point favorites. Yeah. If you win two games, you have a chance of putting yourself in the college football playoff. I don't – as fans, we hear that, and we're like, oh, my gosh, like, this is something we've been waiting for 15, 20 years. But but screw us as fans. We're not on the team. Look at these players. Like, these players, like, you play college football once in a lifetime. And you have an opportunity to do something extremely, extremely special that you will remember forever. And you don't capitalize on it. I'm fine. I Honestly, Kyler, I would have been fine if we lost this game. I mean, fine and meaning, like, I would have been very proud of them. But if we had lost this game on a last-second field goal that went back and forth and South Carolina played their ass off, and we emotionally and, and effort played our asses off, but we just made some mistake. You know, we dropped some balls here or there or whatever the case may be. I can live with that. But going out there and just getting your ass kicked, ass like, kicked. I mean, it's just it, – that's that's the embarrassing part. Like like you said, there was plays where I thought Jawan was playing really hard. And then they run a they run the, the quick, uh, Wildcat, hand it to the speed option. He gets over there. And as a linebacker, bro, you 
you, he's in a position, leave your body and crush, buddy. And he, he tries to like, I don't, I don't know what the hell he was doing. It's like, it's like what, you know, so whether it was eyes in the wrong place, playing unemotional, playing not physical, you know how our DBs I've been talking about all year, been freaking giving them so many kudos of getting off blocks, playing physical, flying to the ball. Where was these guys? These guys were getting the ball and not being touched until ten yards down the field. Then they would juke us out like we were a bunch. Yeah, of they're get, I mean, mo- multiple DBs were just getting completely oh. blocked. Like they were not getting off blocks at all. And I mean, if you think back to Kentucky, where everyone thought this defense was amazing, it was like nobody was blocking any of our guys. Hell, we even did good job versus Bama, versus LSU, versus Pitt, where. Guys could not – the wide receivers could not block our DBs because they are playing so aggressive. And and our also, like, star player, like Tamarian or Danico, when they were in that star position, like, no one was blocking them. But, you know, I, and honestly, Tamarian looked like he was hurt. Because even on that first drive, he had that sleeve on his calf. On that first drive, like, it was – like, there was a play – it where was the third, it, yeah. like he couldn't catch the guy, and I was like, yeah. "Wait a second, that's not it right." Was first, it was the first third down. Yeah, and he just looked like he was a step behind, and like I've seen Tamarian play all year, and he's played very fast and played good. And you know, and the thing is, if Tamarian's not healthy enough, like you know, play Wesley, I because I think Wesley can be just as good, or like mm-hmm. you know, put Danico in in there and bring Christian Charles back out. You know, yeah. it, it for I mean, there's obviously multiple things that that they could have done. Um, and it really feels like they did some like personnel tape too because they were absolutely attacking Brandon Turnage like at, like I think it was like four plays in a row they threw it to his side before he got hurt yeah I um I think I you know maybe they were attacking him personally um I'm not gonna say they weren't but like they also just went with the hypo route of like we're gonna be aggressive we're gonna throw this up and we're either gonna catch it or get a pi and and there were some let I me mean, the refs didn't matter. I mean, there were some very brutal calls, in my opinion. I mean, there were some very brutal, brutal calls. Um, but it is what it is, man. Sometimes they don't go your way, and you have to rise above it the best that you can. Um, yeah, it's like it's like it wasn't the refs' fault we let up that third and twenty. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, them I, copy I, I, and I, play. I, they I, ran like two plays earlier. I did get a little frustrated because I did feel like there was like in that third quarter. Like there was a couple plays where we we were kind of showing some revolve and like making some big stops, and then it'd be a third down and like third and ten or third and whatever, and we'd make a stop, but then they would you know it's like a hands to the face, or it was you know a, a defensive holding, or it was pass interference, or what whatever the case may have been. So yeah. that was a little frustrating, but then again, like you can't put the you know you can't put the game in the refs' hands, and then like I was really disappointed in in Jalen. You know, like if you're gonna go on, if you're gonna go on the Rich Eisen show, you know, a national radio show, and then if you're gonna talk to the local people around here and openly admit that this is a game that you have circled and that you got some extra juice for, you put a massive target on your back. You better, better be an absolute dog if you're gonna be like that. Like I always say, if you're gonna walk, if you're gonna talk talk, you better walk the walk and like. I, like I said, like Jalen has the numbers and he has the performances uh, that he's down in the history books. And like he probably he should leave to go to the NFL because I don't I don't think there's really anything else that he can do. Like, what's he going to do? Come back and like put a little bit more weight on show he's better in the open field. Like, I don't I don't I think he's, he's not a good open field guy. Like He's not going to get better at that. Like he's a one trick pony either take you over the top or do like a crosser route in his speed, you know, his hands are very suspect at times. So it's like, I, I do think that he is, I guess not overrated, but I think he's just outplayed. Like he's, he's yeah. maxed out his potential in my exactly. opinion. He's hit his that, ceiling. That, that, yeah. That's, that's the best way to put it with that, with being nice because he, ha- you have to respect what he's done. But like, I still don't think that like when these guys are all, if you notice, if if and it could just be the defense, but I noticed a couple times where uh, Cedric and Brute were on the outside, and they got those guys pressed, and they're playing twenty yards off of Jalen because a they they're being smart, they got to respect the speed, they don't want to just give up something easy, but they also know too that if they throw something quick to him, I'm gonna be able to make, make come up and make the tackle exactly, you know, like like make him make him make moves, and you know so 
just yeah, there was those some of those drops were frustrating. Just but like I said, the main thing that frustrated me was just the overall team vibe. Like you know, like not picking dudes up, not celebrating, not getting fired up, not you know whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think, and I, 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 think, I like you said, like I after watching it the first time. I was dreading watching it again. Like I did not want to watch this game again. And it I was so upset. And I watched the condensed version twice instead of watching like the full game. And I didn't even really take notes because going into it, I was like, I'm not gonna explain to people plays. You know what I mean? And be like, Hey, this guy got beat <laughs> like a drum. You know, no one wants to hear that. It, everyone saw what happened. Everyone could see the difference in this team. So it, it just was like individual plays. I, I can call them out when we're talking about it like we have been, but like I, I, I'm not shouting out anything. The only play I want to shout out and that I was absolutely – just in love with was Jabari's first touchdown. I mean, the blocking scheme was perfect. The blocks got to where they needed to do. I mean, it was beautiful, the hole that opened up. And then Jabari had his one man and made him look like a fool and scored and outran the other guys. And I was like, this, like that's the first drive. And I thought, that, I mean, this is just, this is just beautiful. And, you know, yeah. our defense can let up whatever, like, we do stuff like this. It's it's game over. Um, obviously, Kirk, that didn't happen. But Kirk, Kirk Herbstreit even made a comment. Like Kirk was like, you know, South Carolina went down. You know, they had a, you know he didn't say this, but the point was like they went down. You know, they had to earn it. They had a fourth down here and there, and then Tennessee goes bing, bing, bang, score. Yeah. And like your tweet, by the way, with the show and Mike Epps from Friday, I lost it. <laughs> part of that movie where he's juking out that big girl trying to get him. And it's just the worst juking in the world, but it's so funny. Yeah. But yeah, Barry not only put the foot in the ground on the linebacker, he had spidey senses and knew Buddy was coming, and he left him too, which was I just mean, a – The guy was like five yards away from him on the other side. Yeah, yeah. And he just – he really pushed it, knew it was coming, and sidestepped him. And that was a bummer because I felt like the rest of the game, like I felt like Jabari like kind of slipped and tackled himself a couple of times on accident, which is like – Bro, if you're gonna be like you can slip once, but like, come on, man, like you gotta be a like a good a good good player like Bijan Robinson, and Jamar Gibbs, like you know top level guys that you know we just don't have yet. Like they're not gonna they're yeah. not gonna they're not gonna go down like that. Like I know I got a little frustrated too with some of the inside runs. Like I wanted to see us hit the perimeter a little bit more. Um, I thought sch schematically though with them on defense, like and Beamer said it, like they really trust their two corners and they played really well. And you can do a lot of things defensively if you feel like you got two corners that can shut down each side of the of the field. That gives you a lot of leeway because you heard it. South Carolina had a lot of uh, injuries on both sides of the ball, and then they had the guy go out for targeting. They had all this different stuff, but they still showed up and played their asses off, and those corners played pretty well. I thought, you know, we had some good plays on them. You know, since first touchdown, I was nervous as hell on that fourth and goal, and they threw it up to him, and I was like, it was so nerve wracking. But then Seth just made it look. Like it was a, it was a, Sen made it look like I threw him the ball at practice and no one was around him. He just like, yeah. you know, so that was, that was impressive. Um, I'll say, I'll say this too. Um, even when Hinden had that hell of a play where he, that nut, that sack again that he breaks and goes, you know, 50 yards down the field, awesome play. Another one, I was like, no one was really there, like even slapping him on the butt, like whatever, like type deal. So that was one of those vibes too. Um, one thing that I did notice, Kyler, and I don't know if this has anything to do with the rumors or, like, what was going on, but, like, we had a lot of good amount of young guys in pretty early in that game. And I don't know if that was the coaching staff sending a message. Like, like Squirrel was in the game pretty early. But besides Squirrel, like, Elijah Herring was in the game first series. Joshua Joseph was in the game first series. Damn, Tyree West was in the game pretty early. Like, uh, I saw Elijah Sims Simmons in a lot earlier. That's one of those where I feel like I've been on the sideline where the starters aren't playing up to their par. And coaches are like, all right, Bacon, all right, Kerbison, you're not in. Like, F it, go find a spot on the bench, and they're going to sit you for, you know, one or two plays, yeah. get, your, get your mind right, unless the backup goes in there and balls out. Most of the time a backup will go in there and 
poop their pants because they're younger and then you get you get sent right back in but but that happened so you know i don't know if that was um you know one thing but last couple things um kudos to the atmosphere of south carolina gamecocks they still weren't sold out you know like they still weren't packed out so they still weren't vol nation but it was a good crowd you know um they 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 had a good environment loud good crowd um I already talked about Rattler and Beamer. Both of them are lame, but they deserve all the credit. I can't call them lame when I thought what they did was great. Very impressive for Beamer to have those guys ready to play like that. Um, orange helmets, I like them. I, I think they would look really good all orange. I think they would look good all orange or uh, orange, white, orange. So I think there's some cool combos. I would definitely keep them. Don't don't get rid of them because of this. That's stupid. That's, no. that's some lame stuff. And then uh, kickoffs. I was kind of getting annoyed that we kept doing those short kickoffs. And then we had like, like, dude, what? Every all season, I felt like when we kick it deep, Jordan Thomas is down there mu- murdering someone at like the eighty yard line. Like, I yeah, don't, I'm not sure we, why what they we, thought uh, yeah, what South we, Carolina return guy is more dangerous than any other return guy they've played this year. Yeah, were we really scared of them? Like, no, kick the damn ball down there. Let us go make a tackle. Like, it just seemed yeah. like that was scared play, anyways. Like, but that was just some, that was something that I even thought about during the game, but. Um, yeah, man. Uh, really, really unfortunate um, that this happened. One happens. more thing I-, I want to talk about is how important the next two games are for you Joe let- Milton. Oh, I was about to. I was going to tie you into that. I was going to tie you into that. <laughs> what I was going to say is, um, yeah, it, you know, it, it stinks, man. It stinks. It is like I would have loved to have gone to get us to the playoff because it helps recruiting. It keeps help building this momentum that we've had. You get a lot more practices. You know, even if you go to a bowl game, you still get a lot of practices. But, like, being, you know, we win these next two games and then we somehow end up as number four in the playoff picture or maybe even number three, who the hell knows what happens. And you have all that buzz and you have all that stuff. Like, you know, it's it's very it, – it's just so helpful for the team. So the fact that we lost our opportunity, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to lose sleep over it anymore. But I am very, very excited, Kyler. I'm very excited to see how this team responds. Yeah. To tie you in to Milton, all this stuff. This is this week is going to tell me a lot about Coach Hype, our coaching staff, and the real fortitude of these players. Mm-hmm. Are you about that? Are you going to get hit, you know, knocked out and step back up and go punch somebody else back in the face? Or are you going to lay down and die? Because if you're going to lay down and die, like, heck with the, you know, heck with the 2022 year uh, team. Like, yeah, you guys did some really great things, but, like, y'all didn't finish the way you're supposed to. Like, you get hit with some adversity, and then what? You, you go, you know, bounce back from this. Like, show some pride. And then, like you said, like, playoffs are over. Hinden season is unfortunately over. It's like we're about to get a glimpse of 2023. Like, this is your opportunity now, Joe. Go win this game. Rally the troops. Do this for your roommate and good friends and get ready to, to keep pushing this thing forward because people don't forget expectations change and people and things do change. And I would have loved to have been to the playoff, but we're still way ahead of schedule, still way ahead ahead of schedule. And we got to keep recruiting. We got to keep getting some more dogs in here and some more elite talent. Yeah. Anyways, take it away. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, you know, I said at the beginning, it's like, all right, well, something's going to have to, change for this week going against Vandy because Vandy's not a dead dog anymore. They're not, they're not laying down and letting you beat them. Like they saw what just happened. They just beat Florida and they're hearing about, you know, everybody wants to check her Vandy. Those guys are going to be ready to play as well as they can be. They're going to try and run everything that South Carolina did. They're going to try and do the exact same thing to us. And these guys better step up. This also is going to show exactly who Joe Milton is, not just as a player, but as a leader of this team. All right, Joe, you're the starting quarterback. How the hell are you going to lead this offense? Are you going to let them be demoralized by the loss and lose another one? Are you going to let them think that they're not as good as they actually are and let Vandy just beat the hell out of them like South Carolina did? Or are you going to step up and lead this team and play with – 
I mean, dude, you're 6'5", 240. Play like it. Play like you're a damn man. Play like you got some freaking cojones, bro. I Like, you can do this. You have every single thing lined up for you. You are given the golden ticket to be an amazing player and a Heisman front runner next year to begin the season. This team can go 10 and two and win a new year six bowl and end up being the number five team in the country at the end of the season, going into the off season with a quarterback who has two starts under his belt wins knowing that he's coming back at quarterback with multiple other guys coming back and be ranked in the top 10 easy easy top 10 going into the season so are you gonna let that go because Ohio State and Michigan those teams you talked about earlier and they don't play anybody and the Clemsons they don't play anybody and they start in the top 10 and all they got to do is win a couple games and they're in the playoff that's exactly what you're gonna have next year you're gonna start in the top 10 and it's going to be real – like you can just glide right into that top four. It's going to be great. But you you got to show. You have to show everyone that there is a future here. And Hype wants to do the same thing. He has to do the same thing with Joe. He did it with Hendon. He took Hendon and made him the player he is now. He, it, it, Hendon without Hypo would not be the same. Hypo without Hendon would not be the same. But he did it. Can he do it with Joe? Because I need to see it with Joe. Because if you can't, if you can't do it with Joe, how, am I positive you're going to do it with Nico? Am I positive you're going to do it with the next guy? Am I positive you're going to do it with the next guy? Let's see it. You just got thrown into the fire. You just lost a huge game, lost your college playoff chances, and lost your starting quarterback. What kind of team are you? I mean, this this – Bandy game defines this team, and I don't think I've ever thought I would say that in my life. Tennessee versus Vandy defines the team, but it does. I, I am a thousand percent more excited to watch this game now than I would have been if we went out and beat South Carolina by 50. Yeah. I would I would have barely watched. I would have too. I would just well, I mean I would have watched, but like I would have been like, all right, let's just show up. I would have pulled up my phone, you know, checking on Twitter and Instagram. I would have gone to the fridge, grabbed snacks. Like I wouldn't have waited for commercial break. I like I I wouldn't have been locked in. But now I can't wait to watch every snap and see really who they are as men. Yep. 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 Define yourself to me right now. Yeah, they uh you know, and they earned our trust. They earned well, my trust. Like, they earned everything that I felt about them this year um, because of how they played. Even after they lost, uh, you know, to Georgia, I mean, we came back and, you know, I know we had a week in between. Who we played between uh, Missouri and uh, Georgia? We played – wait. Or did we not play? I don't think we played anybody. It went straight yeah, to Missouri. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Kentucky was before Georgia. Yeah. So the fact that, like, they answered the bell there, you know, they were in a 24 28 game with Mizzou, and it could have been, but they they stepped up and and blasted. They started making the plays, you know. So, uh, you know, when you get to really find out who someone's true colors are, that's an exciting thing. Just, you know, there's there's teams that I pulled for that were six and six, but, you know, they fought their asses off, and I really appreciated that, you know, and I knew they didn't have talent, and I knew they didn't have the coaching. But as long as they have the effort, at least there's something there about it. So yeah, I don't know. We'll uh we'll see what happens. It, it'll be it'll be very very inter- interesting to watch because there's a lot of things to check and see. Oh yeah. Uh, all right. Appreciate you guys watching and listening. If you are watching, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. If you're listening, rate and review. Uh, leave five stars. Download and re-download. It helps us so much. Um, also, go check out our merch. Uh, How We Doing Bud t-shirts are now live, orange and white. Uh, So you can buy those on the shop. I'll I'll put the link below. Uh, If you want to follow us on social media, at Believe in Tennessee for our main account on Twitter, uh, at rbacon 26 Read at Kyler Kerbison for myself uh, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's all the same. So 
follow us there. Uh, have a lot of fun. And I appreciate you guys. It has been quite a ride this season, but thank you so much for all your support and following along with us. Uh, as always, go Vols.